Hello and welcome back to episode 2b. Um, this is the second video. It's going to cover part C and D of the specification. So we're looking at the why do we have the respiratory system and can you label the diagram of, which is pretty straightforward. Just have to practice that a few times. And what is the function of, what's the job of the mucus and cilia in the respiratory system? Now, as we've talked about previously, yeah, um, every cell inside the body needs a supply of oxygen. That's got to get in. And we need to get carbon dioxide out. So we'll just put CO2 for that. That's got to get out. Now at the cellular level, that's fine. That's it, Diffusion will do the job. Okay, so it will diffuse in and out. No problem at all. High concentration of oxygen outside, low concentration inside the cell. It diffuses in. The reverse for carbon dioxide, so that's no problem. Now, the issue we have with large organisms like humans, like our cells, is we're made of trillions of cells. So that's um, 10 to the power of 12 or 12 zeros number of cells now based on volume I mean the estimates for the number of cells exactly we're talking you could be talking 15 trillion based on volume if you looked at the mass of cells you might come out at uh, 70 trillion and and when you look at the density of the cells you know the exact figure there's all sorts of figures that various scientists have come up with but if you can imagine trying to supply trillions of cells with oxygen and having to get rid of to excrete the carbon dioxide from that many trillions of cells whatever number actually is the number that makes up a human being you can see diffusion probably won't do that job so we need a complex respiratory system in order to supply the vast quantities of oxygen that all these cells as a group need and to get rid of the vast supplies of carbon dioxide that are going to be produced and the system that we use, I'll show the diagram on the next page, um, you can see here. And I've, when I've drawn this, you can see I've, sh we're going to go through exactly what these bits are called in a minute. But you can see I haven't drawn these completely. These structures here would fill this lung and this lung. And you can see I've sort of cut corners a little bit there on this diagram. And I, I hope you understand why I've done that because it was taken forever but I've certainly labeled all the parts that we need to know in order to pass this exam that we're going to be sitting uh, next year so from the top we've got the nasal cavity okay and I don't understand really why they don't mention the mouth I mean at rest certainly breathing is mostly through the, the nasal cavity and then when you start exercising you open up your mouth to reduce the resistance coming through the nasal cavity lots of hairs there lots of mucus we'll talk about those in a minute as well but that air that you breathe in is going to come down this way not this way because that's going to take you that's the esophagus there taking you down to the stomach down this way and if you can make up these little rings those are rings of cartilage and that structure is the trachea okay and those cartilage rings there to stop the the windpipe which is uh, an alternative name there is to stop the windpipe from becoming blocked when you turn your head to various angles okay so those cartilages uh, cartilage rings there help keep them open keep the airways open when you move your neck to various angles now we come down this way and it splits in two and each of these main branches are called bronchi or bronchi depending on your pronunciation Okay, so one goes to the, the right lung, one goes to the left lung, and then each of these in turn will further split, and then they will split, and then they will split, and there'll be a certain number of divisions that take place, and those divisions, when, when you go from bronchi, they are called bronchioles, literally small bronchi, and these will keep dividing in two until we get to the very end, where we get to the alveoli. Okay. Now, the other structures that are left, obviously, this is simply labeled in the lung. You have labeled the, the left lung. And by the way, if you're wondering why that's on the wrong side, 
in an anatomy and physiology, whenever you talk about left and right, you always talk about the, I guess, the patient's point of view. So you talk about this person's left, not left as you view it. Okay, so it's, it's not that I've made a mistake there. That's the way they, they do this as, as a standard. Okay, these structures that I've tried to indicate here, that's going to be simply a rib. And in between the ribs, you have these little tiny muscles called the intercostal muscles. And this parachute-shaped muscle underneath, the main inspiratory muscle, is called the diaphragm. So you could be presented with a diagram like this in the exam and you've got to be able to pick out and label these parts. The best way I'd recommend you do that is literally to have a diagram just like this to cover these back over and, and obviously to keep testing yourself, writing them in, covering them up, checking that you're right until you until you can get it get it right every time. Okay. So the specification also mentions a knowledge of the, the cilia and the mucus inside these passageways, these air passages. So if you can imagine the this is the trachea going up here through the middle. So inside the lining of the trachea, um, we have these special cells, these epithelial cells, and some of them have these hair-like structures, and they're called cilia. Okay. We also have these other cells here that produce mucus. Okay, this, this sticky, clear, sticky substance covering the inside of our of our lungs, of the ear passages leading to our lungs. Okay, now what happens, you can pick this out from the diagram really, but these cilia, sort of in a wave-like motion, are constantly pushing the mucus as it's produced from these cells up towards the top of the trachea. So there's a constant wave of these cilia pushing the mucus to the top of the throat there and when it gets to that point you could be kind of gross and spit that out um, but what normally happens is you'd actually swallow that down into the esophagus so any particulate that I've indicated there if you breathe in any microbes any any particles it will stick to that mucus it gets whooshed up the trachea by these hair like structures and it will be swallowed down into the esophagus down through that way. Okay, so just to double check, previous slides here, do apologize. There we are. So why do we have the respiratory system? It's to supply all those trillions of cells with the oxygen they need and to get rid of the carbon dioxide, which they definitely don't. And you need to be able to label the nasal cavity, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, alveoli, lungs, diaphragm, ribs, and the intercostal muscles. And then what are these guys all about? The mucus in the cilia to trap and to get rid of any particles or microbes, any possibly disease-causing infectious microbes that could cause us some problems will be trapped and then swallowed down into the esophagus, into the stomach, where hopefully they'll be destroyed by the the hydrogen acid that's produced by the, the lining of the stomach there. 